Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin and Binford's Law. So if you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel, help me get to 50,000 subscribers, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel in the description below. Let's go ahead and get jump in. So Binford's Law is the idea that if you take a data set and analyze all the numbers, all the values within that data set, values that have leading digits of one will show up a lot more frequently than two, than three, than four, etc. And the general idea is that numbers that start with nine should show up among the, the least amount of times. And, and one of the reasons this is, and we're gonna apply this to Bitcoin here in a little bit, but one of the reasons this is, is if you just think about the nine numbers it can start with, we're not using zeros for decimals, we're just looking at the first non-zero non -zero number, so we have nine numbers total that the price of Bitcoin or anything that we want to analyze could start with. It could start from one through nine. And if we take a look at the probability of, say you take a, a sample of, let's say you put in like a thousand numbers into a hat and, and you start drawing numbers out and, and you want an idea, okay, well, what is, what's the probability that it would be a you know a very specific specific number well if it's a thousand we can we can quite easily calculate that okay because I, all these go back down to um uh, approximately 11 percent however let's put this on a log scale on the x-axis so we can get a little bit better of an idea of what's going on so if we only had and by the way a log scale this means that each move here is 10x so if we only had say one number in the hat then there's a 100% probability or 100% chance that we're going to draw a number that has a one for its leading value. Okay, 100% chance there's only one number. If we had two numbers in the hat and it went from say one, two, so we had numbers one and two, then it would drop all the way down to 50% and so on and so forth when you get up to nine. So if you had the numbers one through nine in a hat and you drew one out, the chance that the, the leading value is a one would just be 11% because it's just one over nine. Now you then get into the tens and then 11 and 12 and every number from 10 to 19 starts with a one. So the probability if you had numbers in a hat going from one to 19, the, the probability that one of them would, would start with a one, you can see it starts to go back up as you get into the numbers from 10 to 19 and it, it, it peaks at just south of 60%. And then you can see it go down again as you get into the 200 or the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, down to around 11%, then back up. Okay, and it, and it just essentially repeats this pattern. Um, back down, back up. And this is because as you as you span each order of magnitude, um, you know, you're, you're first getting to the ones and then the twos and then the threes and so on and so forth. But if you, if you look at the probability for pulling out a two, you can see the probability is a lot less it peaks at a value of 50%. And the only way that it would be a 50% probability would be if you only just have a one and two in the hat to begin with. And if you continue on, you can see that it also, the max probability of, of drawing a number that starts with a two, the peak is a lot lower than it is for one. Same thing with three, and you can imagine it would be the same thing with four, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine all the way down here. So theoretically speaking, if you take a, a given data set, the number nine should show up the, 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 you know, the fewest amount of times, right? So it, it would show up the least just based on probabilities. If it, if you were just drawing numbers out of a hat and they were numbered from like one to a hundred thousand, then, you know, you can, you can pretty easily calculate what the probability would be of drawing a number that would start with, um, you know, a leading digit of you know, one through nine. So where does this leave us? Like, why is this important? Well, one of the reasons this is interesting is because if you, if you take something besides just a hat full of numbers that go from one up to a very specific number, let's say you look at you know, the number, uh, a, a good example is if you, if you look at say population sizes by country, this also, it also works out in a way that if you, if you take all the populations in the world of all the countries, the countries that have populations that have a leading digit starting with one tend to show up a lot more frequently than two, three, four, and five. You can also look at the square area of countries and, and it also applies there. There's so many different things in the world that this applies to. And this probability here shows why that is the case. Because as you, as you, you know, continue to span these order of magnitudes, you can see that the probability 
of, of, of just randomly hitting a certain number will be higher for one than it would be for others, okay? Now, what we want to do is let's just look at the max probability of having a, you know, if you're pulling it out of a hat from one to nine or, or say from one to a thousand, whatever it might be, um, what's the probability, what's the max probability that you could get for any lead, leading digit? So for one, it would be 100%. And that's because if you just have one number in the hat starting at one and you draw it out, it's 100%. For two, it's 50%. And it would peak when you have a value between, say, if you only put one and two in the hat and so on and so forth. Now, the interesting thing is now we're going to apply this to Bitcoin. So what I did was I took all the prices of Bitcoin and we're just going to look to see how frequently the price starts with a leading digit of a one, a two, a three, and a four. And we might expect something to look like this, where it follows this general, you know, parabolic trend. For Bitcoin, there is some, you can, you can sort of see that trend, but it's not, it's obviously not quite as clean. One of the things you can note, however, is that one shows up approximately 22 to 23% of the time, which is significantly higher than any other price. And this is just um, sourced from the closing price of Bitcoin. So it's daily data. The next highest number is two, which makes sense. This is what we would expect, but it's all the way down at approximately 13%. So, and then it goes three, and we would expect three to be lower than two, but where it starts to go off a little is, is in four is higher than three. However, you can see the general trend of as we, as we continue on, seven, eight, and nine have pretty low probabilities. And, and you can really only apply this, this rule, this law, to, to data sets that span order of magnitudes. And, and so I think Bitcoin is a good example because it spans from you know, less than you know, pennies, basically, and now it's all the way up at, at $15,000. So the, the general idea here is that it will spend most of its time with a price starting with a one. Okay, and this could mean, you know, in the future, there's a, you know, in the, in the future when it finally reaches 100K, it might spend a lot of time between a sustainable 100K, I should say, it might spend a, a decent amount of its time between $100,000 and $199,000 um, and, and a lot less time at, at uh, leading digits that start with, you know, say a two or a three and so on and so forth. Um, and so actually the one that shows up the least for the price of Bitcoin is actually an eight. So this would be, you know, you imagine like eight when it was 8,000 and 800 and 80 and eight and, and 0.8. It actually spent a, a, a you know, a, a smaller amount of time at these price levels than it did at any other price level corresponding to other leading digits, whether it be one, two, three. So one could be, you know, 0 0.01, 0 0.1, 1, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, a million. Um, and, and so you can see that for one, it is the much higher probability all the way up between 22 to 23%. Now, I just find this interesting. I, I don't think this type of analysis will be useful in terms of, um, you know, making a, a specific trade or anything. But someone, someone named Shannon, uh, Bay, I believe, um, who's who's uh, a subscriber to the channel, just suggested I take a look at it, and I thought I would present it to you guys. So shout out to him for suggesting it. Um, it also it also does remind me of another concept. And by the way, this is a typo. It should say one over nine, not one over eleven. But it does remind me of another fun math concept. Um, and the general idea is is that. Um, and, I, and, I, and I'm realizing now that I, I, I mistyped all of this because I'm putting in 11s. There we go. Let's just look at, at the 9s. So it reminds me of this concept, 1 over 9, that did you know that 0.999 repeating forever identically equals 1? We've talked about this on the channel before, but just looking at 1 ninth reminded me of this concept. And I've, I've showed you guys before, and enough people found it interesting that I'll present it again. Did you know that 0.999 repeating forever is identically equal to one? And you might say, well, it rounds to one, but it's not one, it's 0.999 repeating. There's a proof that actually shows that it is the same thing. Uh, 0.999 repeating is one. And we're not gonna go through the proof because I, I don't think many people would appreciate it on a, on a cryptocurrency YouTube channel. But just to give you a brief idea, one fun way to look at it in the, in the context of what we're looking at with, with um, Benford's Law and looking at you know, one ninth being the max prob or the, the, the probability that things tend towards at the lows, you know, one over nine equals 0.111 repeating forever. Two over nine is 0.222 repeating forever. So we can imagine this continues to go on up. 
we know that 9 over 9 is 0.999, repeating forever. But wait a second, 9 over 9 is 1. So this is just a fun little math exercise that you can do maybe to show your friends and say, you know, did you know um, that, and I also forgot the word no here, did you know that 0.999 repeating forever identically equals 1? There's actually a proof for it. You can, you can pretty easily find it on the internet. But this is a fun little way to, to show that idea. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It's a little bit different than we normally talk about, but we just wanted to take a look at, um, at, at Binford's Law and how it applies to the price of Bitcoin. Does it hold up? Uh, sort of, you know, there's, it doesn't, it doesn't actually go in, in exactly that parabolic move that we would like to see. Uh, maybe after another, you know, order of magnitude of, of looking at the price of Bitcoin, it, it will, you know, start to shape out a little bit more uh, nicely. Uh, but for now, it does look pretty good with the one being the highest, two, then three, and then it just kind of comes up a little before going back down. Let me know what you guys think of the of the um, the video. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if you guys like the content. Give the video a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.